Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to build a kind of FUI hood that you see in the viewport playing here. It's, a, it's pretty simple. We're just going to build a quad tree and then we're going to build three separate comps and uh, we're going to then stamp those compositions onto the quad tree. So it's pretty simple, so let's get going. Uh, so I'm going to start a new scene. And in the new scene, I'm going to open the elements window and I'm going to type in quad to add that shape and double click on the row. And that done, I'll zoom in to the quad tree here and I'll just quickly attempt to explain what on earth a quad tree is. Basically, we use a distribution. So like these are the same distributions that you have on the duplicator. They're exactly the same. So we're going to use a distribution to scatter some points into a rectangle. And what we do is we divide that rectangle in four and say, are there any points in these sub rectangles? And if there are, we divide that in four. And then for each of those new rectangles, we say, are there any points in here? And we go on and on and on through these kind of iterations until rectangles have no more points in them. So they don't need to be divided. And um, yeah, that's kind of how that works. So there's a, a Wikipedia article you can look at and um, it goes over what they are. You can have a look at this image, it might help explain it. The areas with high density have um, more like smaller um, uh, smaller rectangles. That's basically how it works. I highly recommend that you do not bother with this because you don't need to know it. So let's just stick with um, uh, our random uh, distribution in here. In fact, actually I'll show you, I'll show you some others uh, because why not? Um, so this is the random distribution. We could have a circle distribution here so you can see what's going on there. We could also have uh, something like a rose distribution. Um, I think that's gonna be a bit, yeah, a bit small um, by default. Um, so yeah, you can have a rose distribution if you want, something like this, it creates some mad patterns. Um, and yeah, but uh, if you don't want something that looks kind of so structural as a rose distribution, you could go back to random, which is what we'll do. And uh, for the random distribution, you have a size of the area that you're kind of scattering these points in randomly, but you also have um, the size of the quad tree itself. Um, and actually, I want to link those so that they're the same. I don't ever want those to be different. So I'm just going to drag a connection from uh, size to size, <laughs> and I'll just make that larger. So there's our quad tree. Um, remember, if you hold Alt while you're scrubbing one value, it changes either one as well. So that done. Here's our quad tree. I've got the max iterations set to four and I'll have, let's have, um, I don't know, uh, uh, 20 points, 18 points, something like that. That gives us a nice set of um, rectangles to kind of stamp our stuff into. Okay, so now let's, um, let's make some shapes to stamp into um into the into the quad tree so i'll turn that off and then i'll just make an ellipse so i'll alt click on the ellipse tool here which will just create a default ellipse and i'll turn on the stroke for that ellipse and we'll just make that a bit thicker like so i'll give this a, a color for now just why not and then uh, with that done i'll select the ellipse i'm going to go into the edit menu i'm going to choose pre-compose and then i'm going to go into that composition and due to a glaring oversight in the public beta, we don't show the comp bounds, um, for, which means that we actually need to turn the alpha up in the comp setting. So this is the comp settings button here. You just check that, hit that, sorry. And then I'm just going to change the alpha up, move the alpha um, up slightly so that I can see where the, where the comp is. And then I'm going to hold alt and then just scrub the resolution just to make this smaller um, so that we get kind of our ellipse in an area with a kind of a, a little border around it. Okay, that done. I'm just going to turn the alpha off for this comp again and go back into our main comp. Let's, let's name these. So we'll call this circle comp and then we'll name this one uh, main comp. Uh, so we go back into our main comp and then the way that I get that composition onto the quad tree is by distributing it. So I distribute it on there. So I'm going to go into composition. I've got it selected. I hold down alt and then click on the duplicator button in the shelf, which adds that shape and hides it. Um, and then with this duplicator, the distribution I want is not grid, I want submesh. So what submesh does is it will allow us to uh, place the shapes that are in the duplicator onto another mesh. So let's do that. We want submesh and then I'm going to drag quad tree shape, the output from quad tree shape. I'm going to drag that into input shape on the submesh. And you can see that we've just instantly stamped that um, uh, circle shape onto the quad tree. 
pretty simple. By default, we scale to fit. So if you don't want to scale, you can just uncheck that. We've got a multiplier here if you want to um, have these things overlapping or whatever, I don't know. Up to you. Or you could go and edit the, the pre-comp if you wanted to. You can keep aspect ratio or not if you have um, shapes that aren't square or whatever, that kind of stuff. Quite fun for like squashing type into a box is uh, turning uh, keep aspect ratio off. And that's it. You can fill all sh the quad tree shapes or you can um, you can have a, a certain like a, a an X number of um, of points if you want to. Uh, we're just going to fill all. Okay, that done. Um, let's go and I'm just going to, we'll go in here and I'll turn off the fill because we don't need to see the fill. And on the stroke, I'll select that and then we'll just choose that um, vivid pink. Um, is it magenta? <laughs> oh, terrible with color names. Okay, so that done. Um, we've got kind of our, our circles already. Um, now let's make our other two comps. So we'll um, just make a new composition. So I'll just do that uh, by clicking the new comp button. We'll call this dots. Okay, so we'll go into this dots composition and I'm going to create another ellipse. I'm going to grab that ellipse and I will just distribute it. I'll change this from fit to step actually, so that in fact the um, so that the the uh, each point is this many pixels apart. It doesn't really matter to be honest for us. Um, I think maybe what I should do is make the ellipse smaller and then make that gap much smaller. So we end up with a pattern like that. Um, again, I'm just going to repeat the trick of um, turning the background color up so that I can see uh, where the comp bounds are. And then I'll just um, change the comp size um, and then turn the background off again. So we have our um, ellipse shape here. I'm just going to give this a color. We'll give it yellow. Ooh, maybe a little bit too garish that. No, let's use yellow. Let's go garish. Okay. Um, and then on the duplicator, we will um, right click on visibility and we'll just go, mm, what should we add? Should we add, let's add noise. So let's add noise to the visibility. And then if I play back, how does this look? So the default noise values are giving us, yeah, this kind of a, um, this kind of a pattern. I mean, that's cool. That's fair enough. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So let's go back into the, let's go back into the main comp and then we'll add the, we'll add the dots composition to our main composition. And then I'm going to turn, I'm going to hide dots and then I'm just going to drag it onto the duplicator and then I'm going to add it to the input shape. So you go connect to new index, which adds it to the input shapes. Now you'll see that it hasn't appeared. So it hasn't appeared in the duplicator and that's because we need to add a random to our shape ID because we can either have all, um, all circles or if I change the shape ID to one, we'll have all dots. I'll actually just want all um, well, actually, I want to right click and go add behavior and I'm going to add random here. So we'll just go into the um, random and I'll change this uh, from zero to one because we've only got two shapes. So the first one will be zero, the second one will be one. So um, with that done, we now have a selection of circles and we have a selection of dots. If I play that back, it's just going to animate like so, which is pretty fun. Okay, and uh, now we need to make our third comp. So over in the assets window, we'll hit the new composition button. And then I'll select that composition, hit return, and we'll call this charts comp like that. We'll double click to go into that composition. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the comp settings. I'll turn the alpha up so I can see the background a bit. And then I'm going to hold alt and then scrub the resolution uh, because I want this to be square. Um, so it doesn't actually matter how big I make this resolution because we're vector based and all I'm doing is scaling this in another comp. So it, 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 it's of no relevance whatsoever how big this composition is. Um, it would be if I had images in here, obviously, but I don't. So it's pure vectors. So the comp size is irrelevant. Um, I'm going to leave the background color on and uh, so just so that I can, I can see the comp bounds. It's actually going to come in useful later because I'm going to I'm going to mess this up slightly so that I can show you how to fix it. And then um, I'm going to build a rectangle and I'm going to um, put that rectangle inside a duplicator like so. So we're just going to change um, the distribution from grid to linear and then change the direction to vertical, space it out a bit, say like that. And then the next step will be um, I want to kind of animate the width of the um, size of the rectangle, uh, but with noise. So let's right click 
on the size. We'll go add behavior and then we'll go down to noise. I don't want to add it to the X and Y channels. I just want to add it to the X channel. So I go over to X and I just click on X, which gives me um, noise on the X. Hit the connection icon, double click to go to the connection. And I want values between uh, 20 and 700, something like that. And then that gives us this animation. Now you notice that we're animating uh, from the center of the shape. So we're scaling from the center of the shape. Um, I actually want it to go from the left and we have a useful uh, deformer for that. And that is the align deformer. So we'll go onto the rectangle shape here. So the rectangle shape, we'll go to deformers and we'll add an align deformer. Go to the UI and change the X to one. And what that gives us is this, which is great. Okay. so. Um, we need to go back onto the duplicator and then move these over to the left, like so. You notice how I, when I'm moving these, the noise is changing. This is going to be very important later. So uh, there we go. We've got this, and then this is our animation. Cool. Um, something to note is when you're duplicating things, the top level transform is ignored. So when I say top level transform, what I mean is the highest is basically the object where you where you drag it to the duplicator and you add it to the input shape. So that, or the thing that you had selected originally. Uh, the um, transform attributes, so that's these top four, position, rotation, scale, and pivot, they're all ignored. And it's only they're only ignored for the shape that you actually drag onto the duplicator. So if I was to group this and then drag the group onto the duplicator, the group position and rotation would be ignored, but the uh, rectangle shape, um, uh, its position, rotation, and scale would be used. So I can give you an example of this because I'm going to alt-click on some text and I'm going to just drag that text under the rectangle shape so that that is duplicated along with the rectangle. And I'm gonna go onto the rectangle shape here, uh, onto the text shape, sorry. And you'll notice that I can move this, okay? So the um, transform information from this is used, okay? Whereas for the rectangle, I scroll down here, uh, for the rectangle, that is not used, it's completely ignored. Okay, so just something to bear in mind. The thing that you connect to the duplicator, its position rotation scale is ignored, but anything that's underneath it isn't. So it's just useful sometimes because you might want to group things before you add them to a duplicator. Um, okay, so that's done. Um, I'm going to just make uh, kind of maybe align these a bit better and then move them up maybe slightly. On the um, on the duplicator, what I can do is I can also position these a bit higher just to um, make that slightly more sensical. Okay, so on the text shape, I'm going to go and delete the text. Hit the plus button because I want a string generator in here. I don't want a hash, what I want is a value. And the value that I want is this noise. So I'm gonna drag the output of the noise into the number field here. Change a few settings. I want a precision of two. I only want three major numbers. So um, we've got, uh, yeah, so we've got three values here. Um, okay, so let's just, I'll just find somewhere where this kind of makes no sense. Okay, um, so you can see that we have a bar that with a value of 81 that is longer than a bar with a value of 261. So you can see that the noise value being pumped into the text uh, has no relation, like bears no resemblance to the um, to the width of the bar. And the reason for that is because by default, noise is based on position, as I mentioned before. So if I move the text shape around, you'll see that the noise value is changing because of those things being linked. Um, you can actually disable that, which is what I want to do because I want the, I want the, um, numbers for the rectangle and the numbers for the text to be the same. And they'll be the same because they're both part of the same duplicate. So the rectangle and the text are, whoops, well, I messed that up. Um, the rectangle and the text are, um, they're all part of the same uh, duplicate. So they get the same, um, they will get the same um, noise value. If I right click on noise and go advanced, use position, turn that off. And now you'll see the highest number, 458, is the longest bar, and the lowest number, 312, is the shortest bar. So that's because we've turned off use position on the noise. Okay. Uh, next, we just need to um, add some colors. So let's just um, go to the fill tab for the rectangle shape, and we'll use blue. And the same thing for the text. We'll, um, oh no, the text shape, sorry. Uh, we need to go to the fill tab, choose the fill color, and then Choose blue. You can also um, you can also uh, drag colors from here onto onto the swatches if you want to uh, to set the color. Uh, in fact, um, if you have the original shape visible, what you can do is you can actually uh, drag colors from the um, uh, part onto the um, onto the actual shape on the original shape, not the duplicator. Uh, but I don't really want to do that, so let's um, just grab a, a blue and put that back, and then I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, um, that done. Uh, we're, we're ready to go. So let's go back into the main comp. We'll add the charts comp to our composition. 
and then we'll drag the charts comp um, output onto the duplicator and we'll go to input shapes and we'll go connect to new index. I'm going to turn the charts comp off and you'll notice that it hasn't appeared and that's because we need to change our uh, maximum num our maximum random ID on the on the duplicator from one because we before we only had two shapes zero and one and now we need it to be two. Okay, so there is a mistake in here. So um, when I play this back, you'll notice that some of the uh, charts, see the, this one here and this one here, you notice that they're scaling, the whole box is scaling. And that's because on the quad tree, uh, nope, sorry, on the duplicator, our submesh distribution is set to scale to fit. So our shapes, our, our compositions are scaling in this, um, are scaling it, um, to fit the, uh, the, the, the rectangle that they're being stamped in. So, if I just find a place, I don't know, let's go here. Um, yeah, okay. So you see this um, quad, uh, quad. Um, oh, sorry, this rectangle down here where we've got this chart. Can you see there's, um, there's an invisible lines and these invisible lines here are stretching over the boundary of the rectangle. And that's causing a problem where these things are being scaled to, to fit this rectangle. Um, and that's because there are shapes that exist outside the site of the composition in our charts comp. What am I, on earth am I talking about? You might be thinking, let's go into the charts comp and let's turn on this rectangle and you'll notice that this rectangle here is going off the edge of the composition here, which is messing up the scaling that's happening on the on the, um, on the the distribution there. So what I need to do is I need to grab this rectangle and I need to move it back over to the left-hand side so that it no longer messes um, with the scale of the comp. Um, so th then I'll turn this rectangle off again and then I'll go back into the um, the main composition and you'll notice now when I uh, when I play through this that um, there's none of that scaling is going on anymore. So um, yeah, okay, so that's done. Um, and yeah, uh, we can basically pff, carry on um, like we can go to the quadri shape here and we can uh, change our, our seed values or whatever just to make more of these things or change the distribution patterns and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, the the long and the short of it is that you can then use things like dynamic rendering to create like loads of variations of this kind of stuff. I think actually in the one that I showed you before, the background was black, wasn't it? Oh, and now I need to go into my charts comp, by the way. I'm, I'm done with, with this, so I can turn the alpha to black back in the main comp. Okay, so there you go. So this is, um, yeah, this is the result. And I yeah, I hope you've found, uh, found this useful. And um, I look forward to seeing what you can create with these kind of uh, techniques. Um, yep, yeah, okay, cool. I'll see you in the next vid.